Hello everyone and welcome! Today I'm going to be checking out the Mole 3D Scanner from 3D Maker Pro. I'll be doing a full unboxing, showcasing various scans, figuring out some of this product's strengths and limitations, integrating it into a simple project, and sharing my thoughts on this device with all of you. Now before we begin, for full disclosure, this scanner has been sent to me by 3D Maker Pro at no cost in exchange for an unbiased review. I will be sharing all of my thoughts and experiences, both positive and negative. Also, while I have used a number of 3D scanners over the years, ranging from DIY kits costing 40 bucks, all the way up to more professional grade scanners costing several thousand, my technical knowledge of 3D scanners, as far as the technology they use and the hardware within, is extremely limited. I have experience using 3D scanners for reverse engineering and designing custom form-fitting parts, but I really don't know much about what makes a 3D scanner tick. Therefore, I'm approaching this review from the perspective of a hobbyist or a maker wanting to use this scanner to produce custom parts for their projects. So with that said, let's dive right in. As you may recall, I recently did a review of another 3D scanner from 3D Maker Pro called The Lynx. I'll leave a link to that review video below in the description if you'd like to check it out. While in many ways that scanner is similar to this one, there are some key differences. Mainly that The Lynx is designed for larger format 3D scanning, Think of objects as large as a car. The Mole, on the other hand, is advertised as a medium format scanner with a bit higher accuracy, which will be better suited for smaller objects. Like the Lynx, this Mole comes well packed in a nice case. When ordering, you can choose between a standard, premium, and luxury combo. The premium combo is what I have here, which includes a turntable for table scanning. I'll showcase that in just a minute. This does appear to be the same turntable that was included with that Lynx 3D scanner that unfortunately stopped working early in the review. Fortunately though, this one worked just fine, though again in my opinion it does feel a little cheap and I wouldn't recommend putting anything very heavy on top. I was told by 3D Maker Pro after that review that there is a one year warranty on their products so that would be something that they would replace. For more information about what is included with each combo, check out the 3D Maker Pro website linked below in the description. Aside from the scanner and the turntable, you'll also find a tripod, various cables, and a quick start guide. The setup process for the scanner is extremely easy. Just screw together the tripod, plug in a few cables, and install the JM Studio software. I'm running the software on a Windows 10 PC. I made sure that it was up to date and it automatically identified this Mole 3D scanner, and within just a few minutes, I was ready to begin scanning. Once you get everything set up, you have a couple different options for scanning. In easy scan mode, you can hold onto the scanner and move it around the object. With the table scan, you can place the object onto the turntable and the object will be scanned automatically. The table scan is nice for smaller objects. When you're scanning, you'll wanna pay attention to this meter on the left, which will indicate if you're getting too close or too far from the object. Over on the right hand side, you have a few different options, including adjusting the brightness and sensitivity. You can play around with these settings to see what provides you with the best result, which will vary depending on what object you are scanning. You have the option of creating a texture map for your scanned object in addition to the 3D geometry. It's important to note, however, that this texture map will be black and white unless you get the luxury version of the Mole Scanner, which includes the necessary items needed for color textures. I did find that in the rare instances when I had issues with the tracking in geometry mode, simply switching to texture mode often helped. The scanning process is very easy, whether you are using the easy scan or table scan mode. I was surprised by how quickly I could move the scanner in easy scan mode when scanning a relatively simple object. Once you're finished with the scan, you have the option of starting a new scan and later combining the two together. This is necessary when you can't scan the entire surface of an object in one go. The software will try to automatically combine the two scans, but I find that it isn't always the most accurate, and more often than not, I needed to manually align the scans myself, which fortunately is an option within the JM Studio software. Also within the software, there are some simple tools for mesh editing, though for anything more than just a very simple cut or hole fill, you'll probably want to transfer the files into another program for better editing capabilities. I went around and scanned a variety of different objects trying to test the limits of the scanner. As anticipated, some objects were a bit of a struggle, while others came out looking great. 
I wanna talk a bit about some of these items that I have right here. This here is about a 1.7 scale Jeep. I cranked up the brightness pretty high and it did a really good job of scanning. Both these areas that are black as well as this somewhat shiny burgundy paint, it captured it really well. Overall, the software did a really good job of keeping everything aligned. It's certainly not perfect though and you do have to watch out for that while you're scanning. For example, when I started out doing kind of a close up scan with this grill here, I think the software got a little bit confused and it kind of shrunk this area. It couldn't really differentiate this from this and this from this. Just something to watch out for when you're scanning. Unlike the Jeep though, I had a lot of trouble scanning this engine. As you can see, it has a variety of different colors, both some black sections and some white sections. This combined with the small size and a lot of nooks and crannies and little details, I really couldn't get a good scan of this engine. That's not to say it's necessarily impossible. If I was to disassemble that engine and give everything a coat of primer, for example, I think it could do an okay job, but I don't think it's capable of capturing some of the really fine details. Other objects that I had a difficult time scanning were things like this five level shelf. This is a 118 scale model and it stands only about 100 millimeters tall. It seems like these sections here are just too thin for it to be able to capture. Same situation with these 124 scale bleachers. You can probably imagine how an object such as this is gonna be much more of a challenge to 3D scan. And again, this little jack stand, it could capture it somewhat well, but it just really couldn't get all the little details. I did, however, have quite a bit of success with some 124 scale bodies. Finer details aren't really present on the finished scan, but it's certainly good enough to create some form-fitting parts or be a great reference for designing a custom interior or chassis. Kind of the same deal here with this 24 scale jersey barrier. A very simple object. It came out dimensionally accurate and looking pretty good, though not the sharpest detail when you're scanning something this small. I think once you get to about this scale here, maybe a little bit smaller, you're kind of getting to the limit of what the scanner can capture with any significant detail. For the best results when scanning, you want the object to be a relatively light color and to have a matte finish. You also won't be able to scan anything that's transparent. I found just some standard automotive primer to work really well, but of course it's going to be permanent. In addition to primer, you can purchase sprays specifically designed for 3D scanning. Those products, however, can get a bit pricey, so you can try an alternative such as a dusting of cornstarch or dry shampoo. Basically, you want to eliminate any shininess or transparency. When you give the scanner something well within its limits, it captures it quite well. While I couldn't always capture some of the finer details, overall it would produce good scans with reasonably precise dimensional accuracy. When increasing the brightness, I was impressed by how well it was able to scan some darker colored objects. Sometimes on black objects, there would be kind of a strange texture in spots, but overall, very impressive. For hobbyists who do a lot of custom design work and 3D printing, 3D scanners such as this mole can be a very useful tool. Take this recent project for example, where I wanted to design some custom side pipes for this 68 Corvette. After a quick scan, I was able to export the mesh as a .obj file. With that, I can model the side pipes and then use the mesh to cut the pipes so they will fit perfectly against the body. I also know how large the pipes will be relative to the body, so I can ensure it won't look too large or too small. There's no worries about whether or not the part will fit or have the look that I want. No printing prototypes, no sanding, just glue it right on and it fits perfectly. Obviously these side pipes are a very simple example, but you can imagine how valuable these 3D scans can become when you get into more complex projects, such as wanting to design a complete body kit. Scanning an object can sometimes be a bit of a challenge between having to look at the object you're scanning and back to the computer screen to make sure that you're capturing the scan data properly, you also have the cord to deal with. An optional accessory is available, though sold separately, which includes a built-in battery pack and the ability to use your smartphone instead of a computer, all in a single handheld device. I think it's worth mentioning this accessory because I feel that it could come in handy in many circumstances especially if you need to travel around to different locations to scan objects. I've had a lot of fun playing around with this scanner and overall I've been very impressed with the scans it's produced. This can definitely come in handy for a wide variety of projects and I always try to use a 3D scanner whenever I can as it's always beneficial to have a nice accurate model to work around and it can help prevent wasting time and material when you can basically guarantee your parts will be a perfect fit. The hardware is easy to set up, the software is fast and easy to learn, and the scans are detailed enough to be useful. 
If the finer details are important, or you'll be primarily scanning objects smaller than many of the ones I showed here, you may need to consider some other options, many of which will likely be more expensive. If you're in the market for a 3D scanner, I definitely recommend giving the mole some consideration, particularly around the time of this video's release, as 3D Maker Pro is currently running a Black Friday sale. The premium version, which is what I used in this video, is currently selling for a little over 500 bucks, and I think for that price, it's really hard to find much fault with this scanner. I'm definitely going to continue to put this mole to use, especially for 1 10th and 1 18th scale projects, as vehicles in that size range are really in the sweet spot for what this scanner seems to scan best. I certainly hope you found today's video informative. Please let me know if you have any questions. As I said, I don't have much technical knowledge on this particular scanner, but if you have any more general questions, I'll do my best to answer it. If you would like more information about the mole or would like to purchase one, I have included a link to the 3D Maker Pro website below in the description. As always, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you next time.